Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming this evening. My name is Michael Moore, and as chair of the Division of Music here, it's my distinct privilege to open our program this evening and introduce our, our special artist tonight, who really needs no introduction. We love Lance, and Lance loves the Lord, and uh, that is going to be on beautiful display tonight in his ministry of music to us. Um, I, it's my privilege to open several programs here, but tonight is a very special one for me personally. Some of my earliest musical memories uh, are of Lance Flower sitting at the organ in my church. And uh, I can remember being in awe and inspired um, by uh, his, his work on the organ. And um, he and Flora Jean were like, you know, it, it never occurred to me that they actually had to practice. Um, <laughs> and it was quite a revelation uh, to me when my mother told me that, yes, indeed, they did have to practice, and so did I, so I'd better get back to my practicing. <laughs> um, but uh, it's been my privilege to, to um, be blessed by Lance Flower for the majority of my life, uh, both um, at church and then here at school as his student in music theory and aural skills and then as his colleague and, um, and friend. And I know that each of you would have your own uh, stories of, of gratitude. And so we are going to praise the Lord with Lance and through Lance and through the music that he shares with us tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Lance did want me to mention that um, for those of you who are not able to stay for the reception afterwards, um, Lance will be outside back here for a few minutes. Um, otherwise, please join uh, him in the Welcome Center lobby afterwards for a reception. Um, let's pray together and we'll begin. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for uh, this faithful servant who has yielded his gifts to you um, over the years and has blessed countless thousands through music. We thank you for his example of faithful service and humility. We thank you for his joy and for his kindness and his generosity that we will even uh, experience tonight. We pray for confidence and joy for Lance as he shares this music with us now, and may you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Please welcome to the stage Lance Flower. Well, good evening, and thank you so much for coming this evening. I was hoping we'd fill at least a half a dozen rows or so, but uh, this exceeds all expectations, so thank you again for being here. I want to thank Michael Moore for those very kind remarks, and there's some other people I want to thank as well. Uh, Doris Elmer is my neighbor and good friend, and she's provided the beautiful flower arrangements at the reception. You enjoy those. And then no one should try an event like this without a Chalet Johnson. Chalet just knows what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And she often does it before you even ask for her to do it. And then Deanna Gardner is her assistant and has helped a great deal with the reception. We appreciate both of these ladies. And speaking of the reception, I hope you will be able to go by, and uh, there's a memorabilia table there, and um, you might see some pictures of me when I was younger and had black hair. <laughs> so uh, go by and check those things out. Then uh, when we decided to do this, my wife wanted to do a cookie reception. 
So she and some others who have helped her have baked hundreds of cookies. And I hope you will go by and eat a lot of them or I'm going to be eating cookies for a long time. <laughs> so I appreciate uh, my wife and doing that and my, my daughters helped a good bit with the arrangements, the memorabilia table. They just jump in and help any way that they can. I'll mention one more thing before we get down to business here. I've enjoyed the comments on Facebook about the concert. One of my friends wrote, I'm so sorry that my husband and I won't be able to attend the concert because of a previous engagement. Well, I wrote and said, I totally understand. Maybe you can begin making plans for the next one. <laughs> and then I said, that'll be when I'm 90. And I'll probably play all the same songs, ju just a good bit slower. <laughs> all right. My, uh, this whole thing was my wife's idea. I have to say that right at the beginning. I was rather intimidated when she said, I think you ought to play a concert to celebrate your 80th birthday. So uh, yeah, I was intimidated. And so I resisted. But she rather persisted. And all the while, she claimed she wasn't nagging me. But anyway, eventually I thought, well, maybe this is something that I could do and maybe should do. And I had the wonderful thought that if it didn't go well, I could always blame it on my age. <laughs> Some advantage to getting older, I guess. So I'm going to be making some comments along the way in the program. Some of the songs that I'm playing will benefit from a brief exclamation, ex explanation. And um, I'm going to begin on the organ with the great Heifredal tune used for that first song in your program. I especially like the, the uh, chorus of this hymn where we find single word descriptions of what Christ has done for us and what he continues to do for us. Those words are saving, helping, keeping, loving. Indeed, he is with us to the end.
If I mentioned the names Dwight and Gwen Gustafson, most of you would know who I'm speaking of. He was the Dean of the School of Fine Arts here at Bob Jones University for over 40 years. And uh, she was a, a voice teacher and a soprano soloist extraordinaire. It was my privilege to accompany them on many different occasions, many different musical settings. But I think my favorite times were when we traveled with the university president on Sunday mornings to a church where he was going to be speaking, and of course we provided special music. The song I'm going to be playing next is one that Gwen often sang in those services. I'll tell you just the first line of each stanza. It says, Jesus has loved me, I cannot tell why. Jesus has saved me, I cannot tell how. Jesus will lead me, I cannot tell where. But I can say from this point in my journey, he has led me in remarkable ways to many pleasant places. Whenever possible, I try to portray the words, the text of a song, in the way that I do the styling. For example, in this next song, for the middle stanza, I'm thinking the words, lifted up was he to die. So I start in a minor key with a rather stark solo stop. Part way through, it changes to now in heaven, exalted high. So I change to major key with a more mellow stop. Then the last stanza, when he comes, our glorious king, I need something big and triumphant. So as organists like to say, here's the opportunity to pull out all the stops.
Now it's time for some songs on this beautiful new Bersendorfer piano.
My dear mother-in-law passed away five years ago at the age of 101. For the last several years of her life, she lived in a very nice assisted living place up in southern Ohio. And this place had a beautiful grand piano and a lovely gathering space. So whenever we went to visit her, I usually would sit down at the piano, maybe two or three times while we were there, and play for an hour. Sometimes I would take requests, and if it were something that I knew and could play, I would do it. If I couldn't, I'd say, I'll try to learn that by the next time we come. <laughs> but I knew my mother-in-law would always request that I play His Eye is on the Sparrow. And I knew she liked it if I played my Grace Medley and Heaven Medley, too. So I'll play these three numbers, one right after, the, one right after another, as if I were playing them for my sweet mother-in-law.
Now, thinking once again of my age brings to mind the story of Caleb in the Old Testament. You'll recall how that he and Joshua, along with ten other spies, were sent into the land of Canaan to see if they thought the enemy there could be defeated. When they returned, ten of them said, no way. But Caleb and Joshua said, yes, we can do it. The Lord is on our side. So eventually, they were sent in with their armies, and the Lord did give them a great victory. An interesting fact about that story to me is that Caleb was 85 years old when that happened. So that behooves me to keep serving the Lord in whatever ways he makes available to me. And as long as my fingers and my mind work fairly well, I'll keep doing that with music. And with that thought in mind, maybe the next song would seem quite appropriate. Lead on, O King Eternal.
During my retirement years, I've done quite a bit of playing at retirement homes, nursing homes, and um, one such place in the Greenville area is the Rolling Green Village. Some of you know about that place, it's huge. It's, they have every level of care that you would need, including independent care. That's where people can live in their own home but have access to the amenities as needed or desired. Through mutual friends, I got acquainted with a lady out there that lived in her own home, and it was a large home. She had a beautiful Steinway piano, and she called and invited me to come and play at her house. She said, I'll get you a crowd. And she had a lot of friends. I think there were 25 or 30 people there. And it was just a wonderful experience to play for those people who appreciated it so much. Um, she invited me to come back again, and I think after the second time I'd played there, she called me one day and said, said uh, Lance, I'm uh, working on my funeral service, and I wonder if I can put your name down as the pianist to be called for that service. Well, it took me back a little bit, but I said, well, yes, Esther, I would be honored to do that. So then the next time I saw her, she gave me an envelope, and it had every detail of her service listed out there, including the songs that she wanted me to play. One of those songs was the Lord's Prayer. I had played, I had accompanied that song for many people to sing or even to play, but never played it as a solo. So I reworked it a little bit, and I did play it for her funeral about two years ago. It's one of those songs that I never tire of hearing or playing, the Lord's Prayer. For several summers back in the 80s, well, that seems a long time ago, back in the 80s, I worked for Frank Garlock at his music publishing organization. My main job was to typeset new music that had been written, 
to get it ready for publication. This was before computers, so we had a machine that typed the music one note at a time. A very tedious task, but something I could do for a summer and then go do something else. <laughs> one summer when I came in, Dr. Garlock said he had a different project he wanted me to work on. He wanted to get his wife's piano arrangements published, but they were not written down. She uh, created beautiful arrangements, hymn transcriptions, but she didn't have the patience to write them down. So he handed me cassette tapes of her playing her own arrangements and said, see what you can do. <laughs> well, it took several times listening to them, but eventually I got them all written down except for one. Her arrangement of How Great Thou Art was a little more complicated than some of the others, and I decided that I wouldn't be able to write that one down unless I could actually play it. So I listened to it enough times to learn to play it, and then it was fairly easy to write it down. The ironic thing about that was that after all of that, the copyright owner of the original song wouldn't allow or wouldn't give permission for that arrangement to be published. He said, there are too many piano arrangements of that song out there already. So in the end, Flora Jean Garlock and I are the only two people who ever played this arrangement. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to play it tonight. I think it's one of her best. I hope I can do it justice.
Sorry I have to keep drinking so much. It's really warm up here. <laughs> I'm getting dry. I know this was billed primarily as a sacred concert, and the next two pieces on the program are obviously not sacred pieces. But there are things that I enjoy playing, and I decided to include them. The, the swan comes from a work for orchestra and two pianos. The composer called it the Carnival of the Animals. There are 14 short movements in the work, and each movement was given the name of an animal, like the lion or the kangaroo, the elephant. It's interesting that he called one of the movements the pianists. <laughs> so I guess he considered us to be animals too. I don't know. But the swan is the best known uh, movement from that work. And it's unique in that it was written for solo cello and one piano playing a gentle arpeggiated accompaniment. The last time I played this in a concert, I thought, that's so beautiful. I want to be able to play it whether I have a cellist available or not. So I put the two parts together and made a piano solo out of it. So as I play this, see if you can envision a swan out swimming on the lake on a lazy Sunday afternoon. The next number on the program comes from the opera Samson and Delilah. It's the song that Delilah sings when she's trying to get Samson to tell her the secret 
to his unusual strength. My wife and I attended the uh, BJ production of this opera two or three years ago, and when I got home that night, I could not get this tune out of my head. I don't think I slept much that night. It just kept going through there. So the next morning, I sat down at the piano and played as much of it as I could remember. And then, you know, there's YouTube. So I found it on YouTube, <laughs> and uh, that helped me to learn the parts that I didn't remember. It's just a hauntingly beautiful tune, and I hope you'll enjoy it this evening. Delilah's Aria. debated whether to include this next song in the program tonight. It's a very old song and rather sentimental. And it speaks of bells summoning us to heaven. I don't think you find that in the scripture, but uh, it's a beautiful tune and it gives opportunity to use the chimes on the organ. So I decided to include it 
A little sentimentality is good for all of us, right? Yeah. And then I'll conclude with the ever-enduring hymn, How Firm a Foundation.
seated. If you indulge me, I'd like to play another thing. I mentioned uh, being where my mother-in-law was several years ago. There was a gentleman there that loved Broadway musicals. He had taken his family to New York City many times to see various productions. His very favorite was The Music Man. So I learned several of the songs from that musical to play for him. And I would like to, to play now the song that I like best from that musical. And I would like to de dedicate it to my lovely wife right back there. The song is Till There Was You. <laughs> 